Greetings to all my friends. And today we're going to take a look at uh, something that was requested, and I promised to do it. <clears throat> so I'm going to do it shortly. Specifically, I mentioned previously that I once done the test between the MTR-12 and Studer A80 using the same head preamp. And basically the question was, which one of those two machines, of which now you're only using the tape drives and the tape heads, will be producing better sounds when working into the same head preamp. So we'll try to find out today. So today we have two participants only. The first one is the MTR-12. Very nice machine in very good condition, all calibrated, all ready to go. And the second contestant is the one you have seen before here, that's a Studer A80. Both of those machines have direct outputs from their heads to the head preamp. As you can see here, Atari has four additional connectors installed on its front panel. The top two are inputs, placed there just for convenience. And the bottom two are direct tape head outputs. Similar arrangement is made on the Studer, where we have two sepia cards, direct output cards, replacing standard playback modules. And through the switch, these heads go to the head preamp, as you can see now. Fortunately for us, both of those playback heads have very similar characteristics. The Atari heads and the Studer heads they have pretty much the same inductance. So when playing into the same head preamp, they produce almost identical output. Studer produces about one dB higher signal, which is very negligible, and it can be easily adjusted by using volume control on my preamp. The main difference between the two machines and their heads is that it's the head design. And Atari uses the more conventional heads with narrow poles and wide guard band. Studer, on the other hand, uses their typical butterfly head design with very wide poles and very narrow guard band. As a result, the Studer head usually gives you a little bit more signal, but it also gives you a little bit more noise. So the net result is wash. However, this is just a top level description or discussion of the tape heads. There is so much more that goes into designing the heads, including the materials, geometry, and whatnot. But today we're going to try to see which of the two great companies was able to build better head. At least better in the sense that we are able to discern. We are going to be playing the same tape on Atari first and then move to the Studer. The segment will be about five minutes long. And that will allow you easy comparison between the two machines. I invite you to put the markers, type markers, on the reproduction. And so you could go back and forth between two at your will to the same segment of the particular piece without having to rewind the whole tape again. 
This is how I do it when I try to run similar comparison, and I find it a very, very convenient way of doing it. As we usually do, the recording device will be placed very close to the sweet spot. In this case, slightly off, but not in any major way to affect the comparison, I hope. And with that in mind, let's go to the first machine. Thank you. 
So this was our first contender. Now, one question that you probably should ask is, why is the Studer head giving you higher signal? Isn't the signal pretty much contained in the track, which is the same in both cases? Yes and no. The track itself is the same, of course. But the narrow gap, the narrow pole heads only covers portion of that track. If you look at geometry of heads and their poles, you will find that recording head has wider poles than playback. It is done so you will never have situation where your playback head runs off the track. So it's given some margins on top and bottom and it always stays within the track. In other words, there is more track width than the pole width to the head. When you switch to wide pole butterfly head, that head will cover some of the extra margin that the recording track carries with it. Therefore, you will get a little bit more signal. Not a whole lot more, but about 1 dB more of signal. And now I move the tape and I switched the input on the head preamp to the Studer heads. And let's see what does it do for us.
So this was today's video and I don't know if you can make such a comment but I can certainly tell you that the sound quality today was superior in my view, in my personal view of course, to what we have heard so far in my video playing other equipment, other machines through their own electronics and that's how it should be. In all my experience, the external head preamps, even the modest ones, can typically beat the internal electronics by a very, very wide margin. So that's it for today's video. And I hope to see you again. I will try to think what about the next interesting video for you. And please let me know if you have any particular tests or machines you would like to see in my videos and I will try to accommodate your requests. See you next time. Bye-bye.